Hello and welcome to your dose of daily outrage from Union Solidarity International. Today we're doing something different. We're speaking to the Rick Smith Show over in the US to find out what's happening with workers over there. But firstly, Rick Smith, uh, you do a, a, a daily labor show. Can you tell us a bit about that? Uh, eight years ago, Labor Day, uh, we started the Rick Smith Show, where we wanted to talk about worker issues. I don't know if you know much about uh, talk radio here in the U.S., but it's decidedly right-wing, uh, preaching this pro-business, uh, anti-worker, anti-union message. And I thought eight years ago, as a guy driving a truck for a living, tired of hearing all of the propaganda fed to me, that there had to be some balance, some some alternative for working people to, uh, to to get some information from a different point of view, which is why on Labor Day of 2005, uh, we started this program as in a small way to add some balance uh, to the talk radio airwaves. And over the years, we've you know we we've fought vehemently against uh, what the right has been pushing. Uh, the sad reality is they're heavily funded by our billionaire class that we've created over the last over the last 30 years, Walt. Rick, it sounds like you're doing. Uh, it sounds like you're doing really great work over there. And uh, here in the here in the UK, we've been following um, some of the things which have been happening in the US. And one of the things that's most interesting and most inspiring is seeing how uh, low wage workers are standing up. Workers in some of the most uh, precarious and and, uh, and and badly paying jobs are are standing up. And we we've seen action in the. The fast food industry and also in, in Walmart and uh, we're not sure of the scale of this or, or the significance but we're certainly seeing it reported and we're just hoping that you can give us an insight into into what's happening in those industries. The reality is, is what's going on since the great since the great Bush recession is wages in this country have continued to fall backward and the lo- and and really fallen onto the backs of the low wage workforce. I mean, you can go back to the to the eighties when Ronald Reagan said he was going to make the U.S. a service based economy, and you look at what the the Reagan dream of our service service based economy has brought us: low wages, no benefits, no no health care, no retirement. And I think people are finally waking up to the reality that there can be a better way and that the jobs that are left here uh, through deindustrialization, globalization, as we've lost millions of manufacturing jobs over the last several years, uh, people are waking up to the jobs that are still here are going to have to be the jobs that sustain a living wage, that that build a middle class. And I talk about on the program my grandparents, uh, because when my grandparents came back from World War II, Walton, uh, you know, it was the same kind of environment, low wages, uh, no benefits, uh, you know, struggling to, to make ends meet, struggling to get paycheck to paycheck. In fact, when my grandfather came back from World War II, uh, they were homeless. Uh, it was through their hard work, it was through their fighting through their unions, it was fighting contract to contract that built this middle class. And I think that message is finally resonating with the young people who are going, you know what, uh, we're working harder, longer, for less, and we're still falling behind while we see this global billionaire class that we in, this, in the U.S. have created through our, our tax code, through trade policy, through all of this, and they're saying enough is enough. Uh, we need to make these jobs that are left ones that we can raise a family on. Rick, U.S. workers face some of the, the, the worst conditions in the world in terms of the way uh, uh, your law is set up. You, you, know, you have your, your right to work states, and it's very, very difficult for unions to organize. And the kind of management practices which are practiced in the U.S. and which have resulted in these terrible conditions for workers are being exported to the rest of the world. So it's really encouraging for us to see that those same things are being resisted in the U.S. And uh, we really hope that uh, our, our, our low-wage workers, our workers on zero-hours contracts, uh, people who are trapped in paid internships, all the people who are doing really hard jobs, not getting a living wage in, uh, in the UK and in Europe, take inspiration from what's happening in the US and join the, the global fight back against low pay and insecure jobs. Well, the reality is, Walton, is, is I've been saying for years we have got to reach across the, 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 the national divides and workers around the world have got to stand together to fight back against these multinational corporations who have done a masterful job of hopping from country to country in search of the most exploitable working conditions, the most exploitable labor, the most lax environmental regulations. They've done a masterful job. Labor has been divided, pitted against each other on, on so many, on so many levels. Be it national levels, be it gender levels, you know, however you want to put it. Uh, you know, I, I go back to Jay Gould, one of our our 
railroad magnates of the 1880s, 1890s, who said I could easily pay half the working class to kill the other half. Uh, what the wealth class in this nation, and really across the globe, has learned is they can easily pit us against one another. Uh, you know, the U.S. versus the U.K., the U.S. versus China, all of these things, all of these divides, uh, so that they can exploit that, and, well, we all lose while they win. Well, Rick, it's a real inspiration to us, and certainly what we're trying to do at Union Solidarity International is uh, to help spread the word and, and uh, to send a message to, to trade union activists and, uh, and uh, working class people everywhere that wherever you are, the struggle is the same struggle. And very often it's the same companies too. I mean, we know what neoliberal globalization looks like. We know what multinational national companies are like. We know that Walmart, for example, is the biggest private sector employer in the world. And what happens in Walmart is really important to the world of work because they set a precedent. And so what's happening in the US is that the, the, the US workers who have the courage to stand up and resist Walmart um, are, are rejecting that precedent and they, they, they're challenging that model of work which has been so dominant in the world and it's really important it's something really important that they're doing that's going to benefit the working class across the world but uh, Rick how has Walmart been uh, been responding to this because we've heard that some of the workers who have stood up have been fired by Walmart is that true but yeah there's there are a number in fact the the uh, there across the country today there are people taking to the streets in protest of the firings and the discipline because look I hear as you point pointed out earlier here in the US uh, these big companies they've got the upper hand they they have the power there's there's very little disincentive for them to fire people or to harass and intimidate uh, there's there's almost no disincentive which is why I got to be honest my hope for President Obama when he took office in 2009 was well, that he would have passed the Employee Free Choice Act which would have given workers in this country a little bit not a lot but a little bit more of a level playing field by having some actual penalties for firing someone illegally now it's the penalties are pathetic if if ever if they're ever handed out uh, and I had hoped that that would pass it, it didn't uh, my my hopes for the president well haven't come true I'm still hopeful but uh, this idea of, of saving work and rewarding work uh, something I think is extremely important and you know for me I, I look at um, as we move down the road with these free trade agreements, and you mentioned neoliberalism, something that here in the U.S. was rarely ever talked about. Uh, you know, we, 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 they pushed free trade, but the whole neoliberal agenda, not really something that, that the average worker here in the U.S. Uh, hears much about. Because, look, our, 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 our media is owned by, what, five, six corporations? 80% of everything we see here and read here in the U.S. owned by five corporations? What does the future hold? How do we fight this? I mean. What can we do? Are you seeing a, a resurgence in organizing in the U.S.? I mean, do you think that there, that, that, that something is changing? Do you think that people see that this can't continue and that they need to stand up and fight for something better? And uh, uh, what's going to happen? How do we tackle this? How do we get together as workers across the world and make sure that we, we fight for something that's, that's a lot better than we, we have right now? Well, there's, 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 there's nothing new here. I mean, the reality is, is we only... We only can do better by standing together. You know, what's the old labor saying? Uh, there's, there's, there's nothing weaker than the power of one. Uh, as we move down the road, I think we have to relearn uh, what my grandparents' generation, what they did, what they learned when they came back from World War II, which is, you know, they, they stood together. Uh, they sat down and they, they fought for better wages, better hours, better conditions, better opportunity for not just themselves, but for their children, and I, I keep telling people here, you know, we need to have that kind of, of bringing us back together. For 30 years here in the U.S., we've been preached to that we're all individuals in this, this Horatio Alger vision of this country, and I keep saying that's not how, that's not how we built the biggest middle class in the, in the history of civilization. That's how we destroy it. And if you look at the, the, the wage declines and the stagnation, and the, the, the decrease of the middle class, it's been on the backs of hooray for me and screw everybody else. And I think we're, I think here in the U.S. we're getting that. And we're seeing across the country workers in the fast food industry and in the, the retail industry saying enough is enough. I need to be able to support my family, not with handouts from, from government, but through the, the fruits of my labor. Rick, uh, that's really inspiring stuff. And uh, it's inspiring for us to talk to you and to know that there are people across the world who are engaged in the same struggle. 
thank you for joining us today. We hope to speak to you again, and we hope uh, that this message of union solidarity and workers sticking together around the world is something which which resonates really strongly and which can which people can take courage from in their in their fight against uh, the, the, these corporations who are ruining our world and ruining our our economy. I'm with you, Walton. And as the uh, the EU U.S. free trade agreement pops up, because I don't know if you saw our president back in February on uh, the State of the Union said that we're going to be pushing this free trade agreement. I, I know the EU Commission president uh, Jose Barrasso said that you know they were going to be on uh, negotiations. So there's going to be an awful lot for us to talk about. Rick Smith, thank you for joining us on Daily Outrage, and thank you once again for watching or listening to your dose of Daily Outrage from Union Solidarity. International.